Welcome back everyone. I will be talking in this presentation about assessment of intestine by ultrasound in neonates. I have three main objectives for discussion. First, I will discuss the anatomy of bowel and how to differentiate jejunum ileum and colon. Then, I will discuss the normal patterns of intestinal ultrasound and the specific markers of ultrasound in necrotizing tricholiitis. And I have some case scenarios for discussion. Before talking about intestinal ultrasound, I have to clarify the watershed areas of the intestine. Any area in the body receiving blood supply from two different arteries and in fact it is receiving minimal blood supply from both arteries. If one of the arteries blocked by clot or thrombus, this area will continue to receive blood from the other artery. So watershed areas are protected against thromboembolism. But if the blood supply decreased globally due to shock or ischemia, the watershed area will be the first susceptible area affected by decreased blood supply. In the intestine, there is four main areas of watershed. Ileocecal area, hepatic flexure, splenic flexure, and the terminal part or the lower part of the descending column. This slide shows how to differentiate jejunum from ileum. And the differentiation can be by detection of plaque circularis, which giving the jejunum the thicker wall. So first of all, the jejunum is occupying the upper half of the abdomen and the ileum is the lower half or the lower right half. Jejunum from inside is more thickened due to blighty circularity which is mucosal falls. So that's uh, the jejunum from inside and by ultrasound we can recognize like echogenic falls of mucosa inside the uh, jejunal loop. The ileum from inside is smooth because there is very minimal plaque circularis compared to jejunum. And this ileum from inside looks smooth compared to the jejunum. What about colon? Colon from inside and outside can be differentiated or identified as colonic hastra, presence of colonic hastra. So colonic hastra, like circles or balls from inside and outside. And this can be seen by ultrasound. So that's a colonic hastra from inside and also from outside. This is a video clip of the normal locking of small bowel. So the normal small bowel is hypoechoic with peristalsis and it can be seen as crowded uh, loops of intestine and even if there is artifacts of air these artifacts can be seen moving in the clip with active peristalsis so that's abdominal wall and there's uh, the loops of the small intestine and we can see the active peristalsis in this video clip If you are still relying on X-ray for assessment of necrotizing tricholiitis, in fact, X-ray has only three main specific abnormalities to diagnose necrotizing tricholiitis. First, pneumatosis, pneumatosis intestinalis. Second, presence of portal venous gas. Third, 
presence of perforation. In ultrasound, we have about 11 different markers which can identify normal from abnormal looking bowel. Nine markers of them can be identified by two dimensional ultrasound and two by color Doppler. Number one, presence of free air. Ultrasound can identify presence of free air. And I will show you that when we start to discuss the case scenarios. Ultrasound can identify mural air or pneumatosis intestinalis. And it, it can also identify presence of complex fluid, which is a late sign of necrotizing through colitis. And presence of inoperitoneal fluid portal venous gas, thickened bowel, thin bowel, and both of them are signs of ischemia, ischemia. Thickened bowel is an early sign of ischemia, and thin bowel is a late sign of ischemia. Presence of abs or absence of peristalsis can be identified by ultrasound, and for sure you cannot identify that by x-ray. And then the intestinal signature, and I will clarify that later in a, in a a separate slide and we have also two markers by color Doppler if we apply color Doppler two by two box of color the normal looking bowel looks like separated speckles or sky of, of color about three to nine separated uh, color uh, speckles And then we have three other abnormal color patterns. Can be like circles, that's a sign of hyperemia, or Y-shaped, that's also another sign of hyperemia, or zebra arrangement of color. Three of them for sure are like very different from the normal looking color pattern. The most se severe form of uh, color Doppler if there is no color Doppler at all which is a, a sign of severe ischemia intestinal signature is the ability to identify the wall of the intestine as five different layers and for sure you can get that in a good quality of ultrasound imaging from inside to outside the first layer of the intestine that's actually a magnified lobe of small intestine we can identify from inside to outside five different layers of intestine the first layer is echogenic which is the interface between the fluid and the lumen and the, uh, the mucosa so mucosal interface with lumen contents that's echogenic or bright in ultrasound appears light and ultrasound the second layer layer number two is hypoechoic or darker than ultrasound that's a, like that room mucosa and we know in ultrasound the hypoechoic layers are the layers receiving more blood and we have the most rich two layers in blood supply are the mucosa and musculosa so we have the layer number three which is submucosa echogenic as well and then the second, uh, second hypoechoic layer, which is musculosa, also receiving very good blood supply. That's why it appears hypoechoic or dark. And the last layer, layer number five, is a serosa, which is echogenic. So we have the mucosal interface, echogenic, then mucosa, hypoechoic, submucosa, echogenic, musculosa, hypoechoic, and then serosa, echogenic. And we can see that as well in this video clip. Like multiple lobes of ileum, and we can see the ileal wall. wall is composed of the five layers. In this slide, we can see two different types of nematosis. In this image, 
we have only part of the colonic walls affected by nematosis and nematosis in ultrasound appears like echogenic um, dots or foci inside the wall and in our body any fluid air interface appears like uh, echogenic so these foci is composed of air surrounded by the fluid content of the wall that's why it appears echogenic so part of the wall is affected by nematosis and the rest of the wall we can see the layers we can see the signature is clear so only part of the wall is affected by nematosis and the rest of the wall is not affected and there is no any other signs of uh, uh, of necrotizing colitis. there is no any other fluids um, and the bicolor doubler was actually close to normal and the in this um, image we can see multiple loops of the intestine and the signature is lost so that's a sign of significant ischemia so and we have a loop another loop and third loop and in between these loops are fl floating in peritoneal fluid which is black and hypoechoic and ultrasound and we have this loop is ex extensively affected by nematosis compared to other loops the image on the left hand side showing the colonic wall which is very thin and is measured as 0.09 centimeters so the normal thickness of the bowel is between 0.11 to 0.26 centimeters so that's lower than the normal average and there is actually fluid outside the column which is another sign of late ischemia on the right hand side we can see a, a loop of the jejunum which is very thickened is measured a point to 35 centimeters which is higher than the upper limit for the normal intestinal wall thickness which is again between 0.11 to 0.26 centimeter so the first image is consistent with late ischemia thinning is a sign of late ischemia and thickening is a sign of early ischemia nematosis intestinalis can be confused with art, uh, air artifacts in the intestine in the video clips we can differentiate that by active peristalsis so in the left hand side there is an area of nematosis there is no active peristalsis and the movement actually is my hand I'm trying to push the, the air away from the intestine to see if these foci are nematosis intestinalis or artifacts so they are staying with the pressure in this area you can see the foci of air the echogenic foci are like moving away which is a sign of uh, artifacts and there is active peristalsis and not overall normal looking hypoechoic bowel and we should not be confused when we have pulsating peristalsis which is abnormal kind of peristalsis due to reflected pulsation from the abdominal aorta so the intestinal pulsation should not be considered as real peristalsis so peristalsis should be active and we have to see the bowel um, loops m moving actively not just pulsating in the neonatal intensive care unit we have three main categories of compromised intestinal performance the first cone category is necrotizing trochoitis which as you know it's more common in preterm infants and then we have compromised oxygen delivery if the intestine exposed to hypoxia or ischemia due to severe anemia or severe hypoxemia like in congenital heart diseases or shock hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and the third category intestinal obstruction and cell obstruction can be associated with compromised blood flow like volvulus which should be considered as surgical emergency but obstruction can be also considered as normal blood flow 
So our approach is helpful to assess all of these three categories. And in our presentation, we'll focus more on the necrotizing trichocolitis. Now I have some case scenarios for discussion. Case number one, preterm 26 weeks, post menstrual age of 31 weeks. He developed abdominal distension, coffee ground aspirate. He's on mechanical ventilation, ECVG, failed extubation due to apneas. Accept all plug gases, unremarkable lab work, lactate of 1.9, CRB of 7, double C's count of 9.6, hemoglobin 109, platelet count of 146. And I have this x ray. So, what do you think? Is this x ray consistent with necrotizing enterocolitis? When I presented this x ray, almost 90% of the neonatologists and radiologists reported this x ray or comment on this x ray as nematosis because of this area of hyper uh, translucences which could be in the bowel wall. But when we performed ultrasound, and this ultrasound exactly at the same area of concern, the intestine was normal, peristalsis normal, hypoechoic, there was no any, there was no any nematose intestinalis, and the color doubler was, in, was normal in all abdominal regions. So we restarted feeding with good tolerance. So this area of concern was just um, stools and, and you have air bubbles in the stool which making the area appears like pneumatosis. That's not true on pneumatosis. Most of us are still relying on Bell's classification for diagnosis or staging of neck. In this case, if we rely only on the X-ray plus clinical presentation, we would consider this case as a stage 2A. But after applying ultrasound techniques, we excluded this case from being treated as neck, and we restarted feeding and no antibiotics, no other interventions considered. Case number two, preterm 26 weeks, post menstrual, menstrual age of 29 plus three, presented with abdominal distension, coffee ground emesis, stable hemodynamics, WPC's count of 12.9, platelet count of 74, lactate of 0.9. CRB of 37 and no bacteremia. This is the X-ray which was reported by the radiologist as no specific sign of neck, no nematosis, no perforation. But when we performed ultrasound, we found significant echogenicity of the bowel. There is no active peristalsis. It was complex fluid. You can see the abdominal wall, and the, below the abdominal wall, you have um, black or hypoechoic area of fluid, septated, which is a sign of complex fluid. By color doubler, significant hyperemia, alternating with areas of ischemia, absent color doubler. So you can recognize. Y shaped pattern in the color doubler. In this image, you can see side by side normal bowel wall with, with maintained signature, or the musculosa can be seen, the hypochoic musculosa, or the layers. The, if you look close to the image, you can see the five layers. 
and just beside it you can see another lobe with extensive nematosis complications of this case were progressed to perforation with drain insertion this infant developed second attack of neck with hepatic abscess and peritoneal infection and this infant stayed prolong uh, with prolonged course uh, of antibiotics and again if you apply Bell's classification or staging this infant initially as per the clinical impression and the x-ray was only consistent with stage 1a but after uh, applying the ultrasound the impression totally changed to be stage 3a and after perforation became 3b which is the bottom of the classification case number three preterm 23 weeks at birth post menstrual age of 25 weeks on conventional ventilation at the time of assessment abdominal distension with absent bowel sounds confirmed gram negative sepsis for clepsilia at the same time of assessment platelet count was 76 CRB 49 stable hemodynamics with lactate of 2.2 in the x-ray we couldn't identify any specific sign of neck apart of from positivity of bowel gas but this is not a specific sign as reported by the radiologist few distended bowel loops are identified within the mid abdominal region no free air is identified this cross table uh, dorsal decubitus x-ray just to rule out any suspicion of perforation and this x-ray has been reported as no perforation and the air most probably uh, intraluminal rather than free air so based on the clinical presentation and the x-ray you could interpret this case as septic alias and you cannot rule out neck and it's very difficult to consider surgical intervention uh, versus uh, medical intervention based only on the x-ray so it will be actually difficult to select any one of these um, impressions By ultrasound, we were able to see free air over the surface of the liver. So that's the liver, and there's the air artifacts can be seen between this, uh, the abdominal wall and the liver with a parallel A line artifact and also some B line artifacts. So that's a sign of free air. And then we evaluated also the, the internal regions and we found that in the right upper quadrant insisted air which is a sign of uh, concealed perforation that's why the perforation was missed from the x-ray by color doubler very significant hyperemia in some areas and other areas with ischemia the, 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 when there is no detected color doubler and you can see hyperemia is Y shaped most of the regional areas there is no detected bristalsis active bristalsis and uh, significant eco uh, increased the ecogenicity of the bowel uh, wall this is a cross section of the colon and you can see inside the colon there is a floating tissue 
which is part of the mucosa. That's the slough the mucosa of the colon. And this is the final report. And we are relying on ultrasound and near infrared spectroscopy in our assessment, but in this presentation, I just focused on ultrasound. So the final conclusion in this case, based on our assessment, was as fall as follow impression of grossly abnormal and ischemic bowel with no detected peristalsis but no evidence of gangrenous bowel because of presence of hyperemia with high oxygen extraction as de detected by near infrared spectroscopy the right upper quadrant insisted air is a sign of concealed perforation with minimal free air over the hepatic surface thinning of, of the descending colon walls was slough mucosa. Surgical drain inserted four days after assessment with a stool coming through it. And later on, five fistulas opened, opened to the skin. So this case was a really late case of uh, necrotizing tricholiitis. Remove the necrotic areas and stool from the peritoneal cavity eight weeks later by surgery. Several trials of feeding never got to full feeds due to abdominal extension and sepsis, withdrawal of care due to multi-organ failure at post menstrual age of 33 weeks. And again, according, according to Bill's classification, based on the clinical impression and the X-ray only, um, the impression was just stage 1A or stage 1B as a, at the maximum of neck. But after ultrasound, the impression, uh, the impression moved to be at the bottom, stage 3B. Then I have case number 4. And this case will be the last uh, case in this presentation. Preterm 26 weeks, one of twins, post menstrual age of 33 weeks, stable on level 2 nursery on CPAP, then transferred to NICU due to frequent apneas intubated and started antibiotics. The clinical team requested target natal echo to rule out PDA. CRB was, was less than one. Negative cultures, normal lab work, and CBC. On the echocardiography, we noticed actually that the liver is full of air. And you can see in the portal venous gas, in the portal veins, there is a gas moving, gas bubbles moving everywhere in the liver. So there's a liver surface uh, and the diaphragm. And you can see the bubbles like here moving inside the portal veins. And this is x-ray and the x-ray actually was done after the ultrasound because there is no any suspicion of neck before uh, echocardiography and again this x-ray we cannot identify any other sign of neck other than some tracks of air in the liver which is consistent with the portal venous gas in this case there was no any suspicion of neck uh, based on the clinical assessment but after detection of the portal venous gas by ultrasound now we have a clear suspicion of stage 2b of neck in our center we are relying on both ultrasound and near infrared spectroscopy for classification of uh, nematosis as diagnosed by ultrasound and we have two main categories can be identified transient nematosis colitis which is not re really uh, necrotizing trocholiitis. Only restricted area, areas of nematosis by ultrasound, no predisposing factors like prematurity or congenital heart disease, no clinical or biomarkers of ischemia. Clinically well and usually presented with bloody stool. Normal near infrared spectroscopy, so normal tissue perfusion or oxygenation by near infrared spectroscopy. This category could be related to uh, protein milk allergy. And on the other hand, we have the true necrotizing tricholiitis or ischemic bowel. And in most of these cases, we should have predisposing 
factors like prematurity, congenital heart disease, HIE, or severe anemia. And it is going to have inflammatory markers like CRB, high in, the, uh, in, the, in this category, or metabolic acidosis. Usually, the infant in this category is, uh, looks unwell uh, with a distended abdomen and erythema of the abdominal wall. Abnormal oxygen extraction by near fetus spectroscopy. The conclusion of our presentation assessment of intestinal performance by ultrasound is helpful, particularly in atypical cases, when the clinical impression does not match X-ray. Thank you very much.